This is a review of eigenvalue problems for midterm two. So first, we can write an eigenvalue problem in Sturm-Louisville form, which is of the form y of x prime times p of x and the prime of all that plus q of x y of x plus lambda w of x y of x all equals zero where w of x is the weighting function and lambda is the eigenvalue. Um, these always go along with a set of boundary conditions so we define x on some range let's just call it here a to b um, where the boundary conditions are alpha y of a plus beta y prime of a equals zero and a second set delta y of b plus gamma y prime of b equals zero. And that is just to say that some combination of these will equal zero and some combination of these will equal zero. Alpha, delta, beta, and gamma all can be any um, constant. So we can then, things we can do with these kind of problems is we can one, solve for the actual eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Um, we can also rewrite uh, all of this as a form of a power series, or not a power series, but a um, infinite series in the form y of x equals the sum from n equals zero to infinity of a of n phi n of x, where phi n is just some eigenfunction. Um, and a of n is defined as the inner product of y and phi of n scaled by that magnitude of phi of n. So it's the inner product of the two of them. Now for this one we should note that the inner product of two functions f and g is defined as the interval integral along the interval that they're defined at of the weighting function and the two functions multiplied by each other. So a lot of times this guy from the ones that we did um, earlier in the semester, this was 1, but you can't assume that, so a lot of times you have to go back and check and make sure that w of x is, not, is 1 or what it is. So, we're going to... There's also another theorem that you can show that y, or that lambda is greater than or equal to 0 if two things hold. 1, q of x is less than or equal to 0, and 2, p times phi times phi prime evaluated from a to b is less than or equal to zero. Now that's useful because uh, a lot, there are three different cases a lot of times that you will get, or multiple cases that you will get um, for y depending on what this eigenfunction, or this eigenvalue is, that will define the eigenfunction, and it's a lot of times nice to be able to illuminate all of the like cases where it's greater than, or less than zero. Just say. So, we're going to try, here's a problem from Greenberg, it's example three, I believe, the function y double prime plus lambda y equals zero. So first, I'm going to put this in Sturm-Louisville form. So recall that Sturm Louisville is y prime p, all that to the prime, plus q of x, or q of y, plus lambda w y, and that equals zero. That is equivalent to saying that p y double prime plus p prime y prime plus q y, etc equals zero because of product rule. So if you look at this and compare this to the y double prime plus lambda y, 
that is that part, and that is that part. So apparently, Q equals 0, P prime equals 0, and P equals 1. Now we have um, that P equals 1, Q equals 0, and W equals 1. So that makes things nicer for solving for an inner product if we want to later. Um, so what this problem was asking is to find the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. So we're going to try um, different cases. There are three different cases. Well, first, we'll get the characteristic equation for this function. So y double prime plus lambda y equals 0. We always assume for eigenvalue functions, that uh, for constant coefficient, I should say, because this is constant coefficient, that y is in the form of e to the rx. So from that, you get the characteristic equation r squared plus lambda equals 0. Or, in other words, r equals square root of negative lambda. So in three different cases. We have case 1 where lambda is less than 0. So that means that r equals square root of lambda and is real. We have case 2 where lambda equals 0, which means that r equals 0. And we have case 3 where lambda is greater than 0. So r is some complex valued number. So I'm going to try case 3 first. That's r equals i square root of lambda. This would yield the equation for y, general equation, y equals a cosine lambda x plus b sine lambda x square root. Um, now, we can start plugging in the boundary conditions. So we know that y of 0 minus 2y prime of 0 equals 0. So y prime equals square root of lambda a negative of sine of lambda x plus square root of lambda b cosine rad lambda x. So y of 0 minus 2y prime of 0 equals a plus rad lambda b, which equals 0. So from this, or sorry, this is a 2. So from this you get that a equals negative 2 rad lambda b. Rewrite our equation as y equals um, square root, wait, so we said a equals 2 rad lambda b, so y equals 2 rad lambda b cosine rad lambda x plus b sine rad lambda x, which equals b, just factor that out, great. So now you can apply the second boundary condition, which is y of 1 equals 0. So now we have b times 2 square root, that's a negative, negative 2 square root cosine rad lambda plus sine rad lambda equals 0. So now we have two options, either b equals 0 or that 
equals zero. That would be just the trivial solution. So to get a non-trivial solution, you want this to equal zero. So you have two rad lambda cosine. Oh, I apologize. This was supposed to be positive. Um, rad lambda equals negative sine rad lambda, which is the same thing as saying tangent of rad lambda equals negative 2 rad lambda. And that is as far as we want to go for solving our eigenvalues. So that lambda n satisfies. So then the second is finding the eigenfunctions, which are really easy after this. So um, we have the original function y equals b times stuff, right? That, are your, those are your eigenfunctions. So now your eigenfunctions are sine, or how do I do this? two rad lambda cosine, these are all n's, rad lambda x plus sine rad lambda n x. And we're done. Now, I wanted to really view another way of putting things in SL form. So we got really lucky with this equation because it was really obvious which p and which which corresponded to p and which corresponded to w because it was straight in SL form already. But here's another example. This was from our midterm review where you have something like y double prime plus 4 over x y prime plus lambda squared y equals zero. Um, this is not in the clear form, so you're going to use an integrating factor. So that's going back to the first part of this class where essentially you're going to multiply everything by sigma. So now we have sigma y double prime plus four sigma over x y prime plus lambda squared sigma y equals zero. Now this is p and this now is p prime from our original description um, of SL form. Um, which is when we use the product rule to expand it out. So now we say that since p equals sigma and p prime equals 4 sigma over x, sigma prime has to equal 4 sigma over x because p prime equals p prime. So that is the same thing as saying d sigma over sigma equals 4 over x dx. If you split this, you just take the integral. So you get the ln of sigma equals 4 ln of x, or sigma equals x to the fourth. So now we can plug that into our original equation, and we have x to the fourth y double prime plus 4 x cubed y prime plus lambda squared times x to the fourth y equals 0. And from this we can see that p equals x to the fourth, q equals 0 because there is no just plain old y with no lambdas, and that v w actually equals lambda x to the fourth because there should only be a lambda term here, not a lambda squared. So from there on out, you could do the same thing that we did before um, to solve for eigenfunctions and eigenvalues, and even if you wanted to put it in terms of an infinite sum of um, eigenfunctions.